So six. Yep. Okay. All right. So I think you've got that done. Um. Generally, I don't really like to make people buy a lot in the way of supplies. Like, like there's some things that I'm gonna make you buy that you will you'll have to need. They just won't poof magically appear. But as far as like eating and drinking, I don't I don't like to get into that too much because I feel like it takes away from from the more exciting gameplay. But that's entirely up to you guys. Yeah, I mean, like stopping having to eat and all that stuff. Well, having to buy food mostly. Like you'll you'll just eat when you rest, which will happen periodically anyway. But Can I'm, you, assu like, I'm assuming any off? group of adventurers is going to be self sufficient enough to find whatever food they need. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. with a barbarian in the party, he'll be able to like trap animals and stuff like that. You eating squirrel? <laughs> hey guys, I got you some rocks. <laughs> maybe you want to send somebody smart with them <laughs> and uh i don't know if you want a ranged weapon or not um they're always good to have is there like a big difference between dual wielding and two-handed i think you have um, to have a feat for dual wielding don't you well Anybody technically can dual wield, but you take huge minuses. Uh, basically, the way it works is there's a feat called two weapon fighting, which decreases the the minus. But you're you're still going to be doing it at a penalty, but it's not nearly as bad. Yeah, I wanted to dual wield short swords. <laughs> oh damn, scruffles, getting cray. All right, uh, so for like a ranged weapon, um. Let's see what we got here. How about some throwing axes? That sounds barbarian-like. Okay. Yeah. So if she's gonna fucking hit one of us, I can just um, see it now. <laughs> how much gold do you have left? Fifty. Okay. Um. This says they're eight gold. I disagree. I'm gonna say four gold each. So I'd I'd take like five or six of those. I'll get six for an even number. Okay. So mark your gold, and then on your next attack box, we can put those throwing axes in. Now, to keep in mind, this is a ranged weapon now, so now you're not using um, strength for your attack bonus, it's dexterity. Okay. Your, your aim, basically. So, your bonus to attack is going to be your base attack bonus plus your dexterity modifier. A two. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Uh, damage is going to be 1d6. Okay. Uh, critical is on times two. And you have to, it's a uh, 20 for that. There should be a spot for range, which is really range increment, which is 10 feet. We'll get into that when we start talking about combat and stuff. Not super important right now. Uh, okay. the, the weight doesn't really matter that much. I wouldn't even bother writing that. And it's slashing for a damage type. Okay. Alright, now let's get you um, some armor. You have a question? For the damage, the 1d6. Uh, I don't think you get the strength bonus to that. Okay. Do uh, I... Let me, let me check real quick. Again, like, this is all stuff that I haven't had to do in a while, because lately I've been playing a lot of casters, so... This is a good uh, brush up for me too. Okay, ranged attacks. OK. 
Okay, damage rolls. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's just the one D six. Yeah, you're okay. not. You wouldn't get your. Uh, I don't think you'd get your strength bonus to that. Uh, let me just double check something real quick and just super make sure, so I don't I sound like a if, stupid dummy. <laughs> just to know if it would get the dexterity bonus since it's. Uh, no, there's um. There's a feat called weapon finesse, which is kind of like that, but not really. Weapon Finesse actually just makes you use your Dexterity bonus to hit, um, but it doesn't do anything for your damage. Like, for melee weapons, I mean. Okay. Oh, actually, yeah. Um, hold on a second. It's a thrown weapon, so you do add to uh, your damage. So, good call, Trip. What do I add? It'll be uh, whatever your strength modifier is. Okay. So it'll be 1d6 plus 5. Okay. A stable gun. Uh, also, I screwed up your, um, your damage for your greatsword. I forgot. Because you're wielding two-handed, uh, you get one and a half times your strength bonus. Rounded down. So I just put that in notes? No, no, that, that'll be for your damage for your greatsword. So what do you have written down right now? 2d6 plus 5. Yeah, so it'll be 2d6 plus 7. Because you're wielding okay. two-handed. The logic being that you're using two arms to swing a sword instead of one. Okay. Dig. Dig. Alright. Now let's get you some armor. Um, an important thing to remember, uh, is that you do get armor check penalties in this game, so the heavier your armor is, the more of a check penalty you're gonna get, and it applies to things like jumping, swimming, climbing, moving silently, you know, if you're, if you're wearing full plate, it's gonna be hard for you to move silently, obviously, you know, clang, crash, creak, yeah. makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so on page 123 is uh, armor and shields. So to read the table, you've got your cost, your armor slash shield bonus. That's what you add to your AC, your armor check. Uh, max dex bonus. Uh, that's something else you're going to want to look at because if you have like, uh, say you have like a plus four bonus on your dex, but then you want to wear scale mail armor, it only allows a dexterity bonus of up to three, so you're kind of nerfing yourself like that. Um, armor check penalty it'll give you. Um, arcane spell failure chance, none of you guys have to worry about that. And then uh, the speed. Like normally, uh, say you can run, you can move uh, 30 feet. If you put on heavy ass armor, that's going to go down to 20. Okay, well, I have like 26 gold. You have 26? Yeah. Looks like you're wearing studded leather, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hot. Alright, so your AC, your armor bonus is going to be plus 3. In fact, uh, here, write this down on the, 
on the second page there's a slot for armor slash protective item. Yep. Alright. So studded leather. There goes Trip in his studded leather. That hot <laughs> slot. <laughs> uh, your armor bonus is going to be plus three. Max dex bonus is plus five. Uh, armor check penalty is minus one. And then on the front of your sheet, you're going to want to add that armor bonus to your AC, which is right underneath the hit points. What's the armor bonus again? Three. Which, you know, doesn't sound so great, but you guys are first level. You'll end up killing shit and stealing their stuff, too, so... <laughs> That's usually the way gear works. Like, typically, like, armor and stuff you end up finding, and then weapons is what you spend your money on. So you can get them big dick enchants. <laughs> All right, so you've got pretty much everything you're going to have. Um, I'll give you I'll give you like a like a regular backpack and huh what other kind of adventuring gear might a barbarian need? I'll give you some uh, some rope. Okay. 50, 50 feet of rope. What's uh, the AC bonus again? It's uh, three. Which is studded leather. Crazed, you're going to fail that. He's rolling a charisma check <laughs> to see if he can resist my charisma. My no. character, my real life charisma. <laughs> that's a huge difference. <laughs> All right, so trip set for equipment. Please. Scruffles, the time has come. So oh, wait. wait, one more thing. Oh. Where do I write the rope? Just in other possession. Uh yeah, there's there's usually yeah other possessions. That's where yeah. you're gonna put like your random whatever crap you pick up. Like for example, my paladin, he's uh, lawful evil and likes to torture people to gain information if he has to. So yeah. I ended up finding like a torture room somewhere where we were adventuring. So I stocked up on branding irons and <laughs> barbed whips and shit like that. Lovely. Yeah, you gotta love it. Gotta love it. That's the cool thing about D&D. &D. There's, like, so many different uh, ways to play just the core game, and not only that, but, like, the various other uh, campaign settings, like Dragonlance, uh, Pathfinder, um, Ravenloft is really cool. I've always wanted to play that. Never, never was able to get a game together. Mm. All right, so what are we doing, Scruffles? What do you want? So can I dual wield short swords? Uh, you can, but let me uh, let me go through the two weapon fighting with you, so you know what you're getting in for, because you okay. may decide against it. Okay. So let me just look up two weapon fighting. Uh, I think this is the one I want. Sixty, boom. All right, Scruffles, if you go to page one sixty. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not it. That's not it either. One. So there it is, okay. Two up and fighting. Yep. So, um... Like, say you... Negative six penalty. Right, but that, like, if your offhand weapon is light, it goes to minus four and then minus eight. If you have the two weapon fighting feet, it's minus four, minus four, and if you have the two weapon fighting feet 
and your offhand weapon is light, it's minus two, minus two. That's not that bad. It's really not. So you'll you'll be swinging at a minus for a while though, because I don't think you have. What was your, what was your strength? Uh, fifteen. So I got a plus two. Oh, yeah. So you'll just be straight rolling then. If you do, oh. if you take that for your first level feat, you just have to remember that your offhand weapon has to be light. Um, well, I'm, short swords are both light, so I just want to do a little both yeah, short swords because that that's works. what I'm proficient in, I believe. Yes, you are. As a as a rouge. All right. As your roguishness. My my rougey. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna get. And can I also get like a composite short bow as well? Yeah, as long as you can afford it. Sweet. So that's 75 gold for the composite short bow, 20 gold for the two short swords, and then my studded leather would be 25 gold. Trees leave with 5 gold. And uh, how many arrows can I carry? Because 1 gold is 20 arrows. Um, so is that enough? Should I just spend 1 gold or 2? I, I'd, I'd spend 2 and get 40. 40? Okay. And, cause you'll... So I'm at 3 gold? <laughs> I'm so poor now. Right. Uh, but I'm also, like, I don't like to make people buy shit that they would obviously have for their chosen class, like thieves' tools. Like, you're not okay. going to get mass. So I don't have to buy lockpicks. <laughs> no, I'll give those to you, but they're not going to be super great ones or anything like that. They're just going to be basic, but. So write that down on your. Um... Right. So do I put the short swords in, like, two different boxes, I guess? Nope, you can put them in the same box. Okay. Two times short swords. Uh, let's attack. Uh, uh. Crap, I'm off the page again. Is it 116? For what? Two weapon fighting? No, or I was looking for just the oh, damage for the, for the short swords. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hold on a second. I got it for you. Uh, I believe oh, there it's it is. 116. Yes. So what's the damage S and damage M? What is? Uh, the damage under S is if your character were small. Oh, like okay. Like if you were a halfling. Okay. So my, mine would be 1d6, I guess, since I'm medium. Am I medium? Yeah, you're medium. Okay. So that's well, the damage. Well, you're not rare, and you're certainly not well done. Good. <laughs> 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 Terrible. So damage, you put 1d6, and that's it, right? Yep. Okay. Well, it'll be 1d6 on each swing. Okay. Because you're, you're fighting with two weapons, so it's basically giving you an extra attack, just swing. out of minus. First swing right there, just go back. <laughs> so and like, crit, whereas, times two. whereas Trip and Lou, when they attack, they're just doing the one attack roll, you roll twice. And it'll be at... Okay. The, the way to calculate it is... Your offhand weapon is light. You have the two weapon fighting feet. Make sure you write that down under your feet. Oh, yeah. and you'll you'll get one more for being human. So two we'll we'll do weapon. that after. Okay. And okay. also under other possessions, write down thieves' tools and fifty feet of rope. Do I have to write down my arrows down here too? Um, there's a. Sp I don't know if there's one on the sheet you're using, but there's a ammunition uh, spot like underneath the various attacks on the first page. Um, different people do it different ways. I usually keep track of it in the notes. Oh, section. there it is. Oh, like I for see. the composite short bow, I'll write down how many arrows I have. Okay, so I need to write down composite short bow. Uh, ammunition, forty arrows. Yes, forty arrows. Um. So what what would I put down for the attack bonus for short swords? I don't get one, right? Um. Just write down. Um. Yeah, because it's balancing it out. So just write zero slash zero. Zero slash zero. Okay. So now for composite short bow. Where's that thing? I feel like you're saying that funny. Composite. Composite. <laughs> pretty, pretty sure it's composite. <laughs> composite. This, yeah. this is like this weird Canadian well, thing again. Composite. Okay. Com composite. Composite. Is that what she's compose yeah, it. Composite. Com composite. <laughs> <laughs> Want that a composite, babe? Mm -hmm. 
Scruffles receives Should composite we... bow. <laughs> Provence rejoices. Composite. <laughs> Fucks. She oh. wears. She wears. Shit. Right, so boot. it's not a thrown Shut weapon, so you're not going to get your uh, strength bonus to damage. <sighs> and it's going to be your dexterity bonus is your attack. So like whatever your base attack bonus, and I'm going to get you guys into the habit. Bab is base attack bonus, so I don't have to. Bab. Yeah, bab. Bab. So wait. So yeah, what? for for ranged attacks, um. It's going to be your base attack bonus plus your dexterity modifier. So, what? Plus my dexterity. Oh, okay, so plus three. And then what's the base attack? Bonus? I think yours is zero. Zero? For rogue. Oh. Okay. And then the damage is 1d6. And then the crit is... Times three. Okay. Does that just mean I have to roll a 20 and then you multiply it by three? Right. If if you if you critically hit, the damage is tripled, so it'll be three d six instead of just one. My range is seventy feet. Right, and again, like I said, that's range increment. That's something we'll get into later. It's usually oh. not that important. Okay. It's it's basically to uh, to like determine like how hard it is to hit something farther away from you as opposed to close up and that kind of stuff. Alrighty. Cool beans. Where do I need to put like the armor stuff? Cause I'm getting studded leather. Yeah. You want the studded leather? The studded leather. Oh, are oh, there it is gear. Yep. It should be like on the next couple pages. Yep. Uh, one twenty-three. Studded leather. One twenty-three. You guys are gonna be all black metal and shit. You mean black metal? <laughs> Fucking like you guys are gonna look like um, oh what the hell was that guy's name from Judas Priest? Oh God, <laughs> Rob, Rob Halford. <laughs> uh. uh, what's what's with the max decks? What is that? What does that mean? Several scruffles showed up in assless chaps. <laughs> <laughs> are you asking about the max dex bonus on your armor stuff? Yeah, so it's like that means the that's five. the max year you can get dex bonus so if you're wearing like padded light armor you can have your dex bonus go up to eight so like if you have eight bonus you can utilize that but if you're like oh you know what fuck it i feel like wearing a breastplate well <laughs> say goodbye to that plus eight that you have access to you can only get three of it now right because oh, okay. bulky armor is going to restrict your movement okay and keep in mind that'll also affect like your armor class, that kind of stuff. So, Check usually people what? people who have tons of fucking armor on don't give a shit about dex bonus to yeah. AC. They're just Whatever, stacking bro. metal. Oh, maybe I should have gotten lighter stuff then. Should I get lighter stuff? Well, what's your yeah, I think studded leather would be fine, because your dex bonus is what, plus three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're yeah. still good. Um, the only okay. thing to note is your armor check penalty. Cause you will, minus one. You will get a minus one uh, for things like hide, move silently, Ooh. climb. I don't want that. Oh, fuck that, let's go back to leather. Just go straight leather? Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, you got the table there, right? Yes. Armor shield bonus plus two. Where's that? Oh, there you are. Uh, ow. Plus six. And then zero for the check penalty, blah, blah, blah. Hooray, province rejoices. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Scruffles <laughs> continues to sneak. Do I need to worry about, like, speed and weight? Other... Speed. Prince of Canada announces <laughs> announces <laughs> national holiday. Good job, Eddie. Eh? Fifteen pounds. I hate you so much. Scruffles Rogue has a flappy head, like in South Park. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna go steal some stuff. I'm gonna go steal some stuff, Betty. Eh? <laughs> Is her deity Beelzebub? <laughs> oh God! I'm gonna kill all of you in your sleep. <laughs> 
All right, so uh, do you need anything else for equipment that you can think of? And No, like I I said, got I'm my not... pace tools, I got my rope. I'm not going to get into stuff like keeping track of food and stuff, because it's just annoying and a waste of time, really. Like I said, Um... the, on the only time I really ever take things like that into consideration is like when you're higher level and you end up going to like other planes of existence where there isn't going to be like a Piggly Wiggly or whatever <laughs> to go get yourself a Snapple, you know. Right. But by then you usually have a caster that's like, create food and water. <gasps> That'd Meh. be the best skill. That'd be the best skill. <laughs> Scruffles is rethinking her rogue. Rethinking real life. I don't know how to do that in real life. <laughs> Oh, if only there were a way. I actually saw recently that uh, somebody had made a 3D food printer. So it's like Yeah. the next step closest, closer to replicators. That's fucking Yeah. sweet. That'd be awesome. Probably tastes like dirt, but... Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Chunk form patties, man. What's the speed for, like, what is, what is the speed effect for the armor? Oh, uh, speed is... It, like, if your speed is naturally 30 feet, it becomes whatever is in the column. So it doesn't change for you. But, like, Oh, say okay. if you were wearing chain mail, it would go down to 20. Full plate goes down to 20. Okay. Because you're heavier, Is my speed you're not going to be able chain? to run as fast. Uh, I don't think so. What are you wearing? Studded Started leather. No. Nope, you're good. And you have the, the plus 10, so yours is actually 40. So I can, like, run ahead of everyone. Oh, and every, everybody can take uh, three torches. Standard adventuring gear. I don't need torches. I got dark vision, bro. Eh, if you don't want to, give them to Scruffles. <laughs> Scruffles, I'll sell you my three torches. <laughs> Should just write up a contract. Say so you have to like be my slave or something, but I'll be like, no, no, it's just it's just a simple trade contract. It's fine. Trip the people like your picture. They like your your webcam. <laughs> we should have someone like draw up pictures for our character. <laughs> And you have like no intelligence, so it's pretty accurate. Cat's just like, oh. Kind of worked out really well, yeah. It's fate. It's fate. Yeah. <laughs> Tw Twas meant to be. Alright, so I think Scruffles is done for equipment, so on to Lou. Oh <laughs> okay, yeah, I got a question. Shoot. Um, armor spikes. Ooh, them armor spikes. How do those work again? Um, well, they're 50 gold, so they're pretty expensive. Right, yeah. Um, and then I forget. It's got to be somewhere close to here. Armor I was spikes. looking through the thing and I couldn't. I'll uh I'll read you what it says in the book. Okay. You can have spikes added to your armor, which allow you to deal extra piercing damage on a successful grapple attack. The spikes count as a martial weapon. Uh, you're proficient with that anyway. Uh. You can also make a regular melee attack or offhand attack with the spikes, and they count as a light weapon in this case. But it doesn't, it, I'm trying to, because I remember the grappling. I'm just wondering if something tries to grapple you, does it work? Uh, I believe it does. On, like, honestly, like, even if it came down to, like, DM's discretion, I would say so. Okay. Well, I just let's. gotta see, like, what the... I'm not sure where it puts the damage. Oh, it's under weapons. Of course it is. Why would they put it on the armor table? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to have enough for it. I'll have to see. All right, so this is going to be 30. Dwarven 1. 
I'm like trying to do the basic math. And seven. Uh, spiked armor, the damage for you would be 1d6. Ooh. Um, trying to see if I have enough for it. I think gauntlets. What's the point of having gauntlets? Spiked gauntlets? Punch somebody in the mouth. Well, <laughs> no, I'm saying the for, like, armor. It doesn't really give you an armor bonus. Armor check penalty says special. Is there a thing for talking about gauntlets somewhere? Gauntlets. Okay, armor gauntlet has small. Oh, I can attach my weapons to it so they don't. Right, use like a weapon chain. Makes it harder to disarm you. And that would probably, like the armor check penalty would probably apply to things like climb. Because you've got like these big bulky metal mitts on, you might not not be able to get as good of a handhold, something like that. Yeah, this is armor check penalty is special. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't apply it to everything. Only basically only things that you were doing with your hands. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I never remove my gauntlets, even though they're spikes. I mean, um, so armor check penalty on whipping up a batch. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see. So I need how much gold do we start off with? One fifty, right? Yours is one fifty, yeah. All right. So so if I subtract, ooh, ooh. So I can get the armor spikes, and that'll put me at thirteen. Um, and then if I get a gauntlet, because they're each, so I have one gauntlet, so I have one free hand and one gauntleted hand, because it's eight gold per one gauntlet. Really? No, it's, I'd say two. What? For for the gauntlet, just it two costs gold. two gold. Yeah. Oh. Ac according then. to my sheet, it says two. Oh, it says eight gold. Trip a deal. Give on a deal. the player's handbook. Yeah, table no seven deals. five weapons. Oh, no, I'm looking at gaunt uh, gauntlet locked on table seven dash six armor and shields. Oh, locked gauntlet. Okay. Yeah, then that so that one's eight gold. That's the one that you can put weapons in and they don't right. it, fly out or whatever. It's like uh it's like you've got like this metal around your uh wrist and like it might have a latch or something like that where it like closes keeps it closed so that way it makes it harder for people to disarm you. Yeah, ten uh plus ten bonus on any roll made to keep from being disarmed in combat. That's awesome. That yeah. plus ten is huge. Yeah. <laughs> So I might lose my shoe, but I'm not losing my dwarven war axe. All right, and I got the armor spikes, so I'm down to five gold. Do you have a shield? Yeah, the heavy wooden shield. Right on. All right, so now I got to put all this crap in my. Move this over here. So do I put? Hold on, I'm looking at and the armor protective, shield protective. Okay. The other thing is for like uh, the armor check penalty on your shield. That's not gonna apply like all the time. On basically, only when you have your shield out and ready. Um, so like if you have your shield out and you're trying to swim, obviously it's gonna be. It'll apply then, but like. Right. If you you know push your I'm... shield onto your back and you want to climb up something, it won't apply. My whole thing about water in me is that fucking no. <laughs> Like, if I, like, I will fucking know. Boats, even, like, it's got to be, like, a fucking huge-ass boat with, like, even, like, no. I don't right, like struggles. water. You're going to have to start stealing a bunch of shit so you can afford a war barge for Lou. <laughs> All right. 
Can't I just throw him across? Yeah, we'll just You'd get like, the barbarian oh. to fucking knock him out and stick him in a canoe. He's <laughs> <Right. laughs> gonna up. get like a potion, <laughs> a potion of like water breathing or something, so I can just walk my ass across the bottom of whatever we got across that's made of water. Well, and you guys will end up finding a bunch of potions and stuff like that too. True. Yeah. All right. Do I have like all these attack boxes, and I only have one weapon. Well, that's like. Uh... Eventually, you'll end up picking up more stuff. Like, you might keep, like, a a weapon that you find that you don't want to use all the time, but it'd still be useful in certain situations or as a backup. Oh, yeah, that's right. If your shit gets sundered or lost some way. Okay, so... Where do weapons go? So I have the Dwarven War Axe is nice because it's 1d10 since it's medium. <laughs> and like equipment isn't too much to worry about right now because like I said you're gonna you're gonna loot and pillage. You'll find treasure, you'll be able to buy better shit. You might find something that you like. Times. By the way, am I the only one that's like a little bit worried that Scruffles is going to be playing a rogue? Why? Why you, should you we should, be worried? You should both be very afraid of losing your possessions. <laughs> Sleight of hand. I don't have anything uh, to lose, I'll leave though. Them alone. <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> not, well, not yet. I'm going to work on... Uh... Scruffles, you're chaotic. It's in your nature to steal. Criminal. Yeah, but I'll leave, I'll leave <laughs> my partners alone. They're beneficial. Scruffles. It's just going to be stealing from everybody else and we might have to, you know, get out of town real quick a couple times. Yeah, right. Before before city <laughs> guards show up and ruin your life. Literally. Stole the crown off so of the king's head. He saw me. Everybody saw me. Run. <laughs> you don't worry about range on, like, melee weapons, right? No. Yeah, so I thought. Um... Even, even if you were in a situation where you would want to throw your weapon, <laughs> like, the, the attack minuses would be so ridiculous it wouldn't even be worth it. Yeah, it's. I don't it's, think I've it, ever seen anybody throw a melee weapon. <laughs> I would try, and then I'd feel like, oh shit, yeah, this thing's attached with this gauntlet. Oops. <laughs> well, no, that's not entirely true because there is a prestige class called Master Thrower, and that's like all they do. But that's that's like that's a like a build. it's a prestige class, so you have to like build yourself up to it and build a character around it, basically. Oh, can I like get throwing knives, like little shurikens or whatever? If you want. I think shurikens are um, considered exotic in this, though. You, what does th that mean? There's like, there's like, like hard to find daggers. or whatever? No, they're just like, uh, it's a different class of weapon. Uh, but they're not very common, so like not all rogues are going to know how to use them. Like, I think uh, there's a ninja class that is proficient with them. <laughs> um, but that's in another book. I think that's in Complete Asshole. I forget. There's a lot of other uh, source books that are called like Complete Adventure, Complete Scoundrel, Complete Mage, and okay. there's like a lot of prestige classes and stuff like that. Prestige classes are um, classes you can take levels in, but they, you have to meet certain requirements first, so you can't take them at first level. Usually you can't take them till around fourth or fifth level anyway. Oh, okay. Do I move slower because I have a great sword? Okay. Weapon does not affect movement. My gear is not going to affect my movement at all because I always... Because you're dwarf. Consistently... Yeah, okay. So I don't need to put that in. Nope, you're just um, always going to be 20. Forever young. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, had to. Now I really want throwing knives. This is sad. <laughs> well, maybe you'll find some. I'll sell you my throwing axes. Stop buying shit from you. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just steal it when she wants it. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much, yeah. Don't care about weight. Check penalty.
Can't we? Oh, perfect. Um... <clears throat> oh, none of us have any cool spells. It's because none of you. I wanted you to see casters. some spell casting. I know. I wanted to see some. Well, spell even casting. if um, if if we take these characters and do roll twenty with them, which I would like to do, uh, we're probably going to need another player anyway. Oh, okay. So, are you going to have a character thought? Well, I'd prefer not to if I have to DM, just because it's too much work. Or if somebody, if we can find somebody else that wants to DM, I'll I'll roll up a character. It doesn't matter to me one way or another. It's all the same to me. Hmm. All right, I have to look at armor spikes real quick to see. I still need to. Because you're looking at it in the weapons. Yeah, armor spikes. You know, spikes added to your armor, which allows you to deal extra piercing damage. It doesn't really say anything about um, their defensive stuff, so that's kind of on you as far as yeah. what it does. Um, yeah, we'll worry about that when the when the time comes. Right. Yeah. All right. So that pretty much takes care of my gear and puts me at five gold pieces. Hey, what's up, FRD? Didn't see you come in, buddy. Eh? Wow, we got the whole gang here. Darth Hello, Satan, buddy. haven't seen you in a while, bro. What's up, everybody in chat? You guys uh, having fun? Learning a thing or three? <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, Scruffles, you were a asking about use magic device. Um, oh yeah. Uh, DC is a difficulty check, so that's a target number you have to reach with uh, whatever skill you're using. Okay. So s say you find a wand and you want to use it, you have mm -hmm. to, along with your use magic device modifier, you roll d20, and if you don't hit the 20, it doesn't work, and potentially, if you fail by enough, like if you roll a 1, that wand's blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, In and around your face. So, so maybe I should put like four points in to use magic device just in case. <laughs> if that's if that's a route that you're going to go, it's good for rogues because it gives you the ability to use spells that you normally wouldn't get. Yeah, sweet. Let's and, steal um, all the magical things. All of them. Like for for example, if you end up cross classing, like there's a prestige class called assassin, uh, and you get a certain oh. number of spells with that. Uh, if it's a spell you already have access to, you don't have to use magic device. You can just bloop. Oh, snap. What like cast, you, like, like casters can missions? use wands without rolling use magic device because they know how the spell works. They just point and click, you know. Right. That's cool. That's cool. Being an assassin. So bad. Assassin! <laughs> assassin. Yeah, I was think... next. Um, we've done gear, so let's do feats. I know you already feats. have two weapon fighting. Two weapon so fighting, yeah. We'll start with you, because you get another one for being human. Okay. All right. Yes. All right, so there's a big, big, big table of feats on pages 90 and 91, and that gives you, like, the basic idea of what the feat does. And for the benefit of everybody in chat who may not be very familiar with D&D, I'll get, while you're looking at that, I'll uh, give a brief rundown. I'll Mother just read God. out of the, the player's handbook. A feat is a special feature that either gives your character a new capability or improves one that he or she already has.
For example, Lydda, a halfling rogue, chooses to start with the improved initiative feat at first level. That gives her a plus four bonus on her initiative checks. At third level, she gains a new feat and chooses dodge. Um, dodge, we we house ruled um, because it gets it's it gets very complicated to keep track of it. Like by the book, you have to pick a specific enemy, and then you get a plus one bonus to your armor class against that enemy. Um, we just we took that part out and say it just gives you plus one to your AC. Because it's easier to do that than just keep track of, I'm focusing on him now. No, I changed my mind. I'm <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it can get very, uh, very dodgy. As they would say across the pond. Oh. I see two that are pretty sweet. The agile one and <sighs> stealthy. Because that stealthy helps with... Oh, wait, no. That doesn't... Wait, which... What's the one that helped with my spot checks? Is it Agile? Mm, alertness? No. Oh, that's what I was looking at. Alertness. Yeah. Listen and spot checks. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, well, the other thing that you could take... There, there's a couple good feats I'll point out for you for your class as a rogue. Um, mm -hmm. You want to do the two weapon fighting, so you're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, eventually you'll be able to take uh, two-weapon defense, improved two-weapon fighting, greater two-weapon fighting, um, and that, like, it decreases oh, the, the minuses, and you, you get the general idea. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, weapon finesse you can't take yet, because you don't have a plus one BAB, but that's good for rogues, um, especially if you have a high dex, because it replaces your your two hit from strength to dex. So if your oh. dex is better than your strength, it'll be easier for you to hit things. Yeah. But it doesn't add your dex to damage. That's still strength. Okay. So just something to keep in mind for the future. For the future, yeah. If you plan on doing a lot of shooting, a uh, point-blank shot is good. Within 30 feet, okay. Well, the the idea is you want to take point blank shot and then precise shot, because say, say Lou is fighting an orc or something, and you want to shoot at the orc, you're going to take a minus four penalty on your attack because the orc is engaged with Lou. Oh, so okay. like you have to kind of, you know what I mean? Like you'd have to aim a little more carefully to not hit him. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which would be bad. Don't don't hit your allies. I'm not. <laughs> I don't think I would aim a bow into that now. <laughs> so it, it, it really depends on what you want to do. Improved initiative is never a bad choice. I tend to take that more than I should, I think, but... When, when would I roll for initiative? What is that for? Uh, that's at the beginning of combat. Oh, okay. So whether like I attack first or they attack first? Yeah, essentially. It, it's like... Um, You've played Final Fantasy X, right? Long, long ago. Okay. Well, you're, it's turn-based, right? Well, all of them are, yes. Yeah. So it's the <laughs> same same concept. Six. Same exact okay. concept. Like, okay. uh, on the side of the screen, there would be a list of, like, who's going next. Like, who's mm -hmm. taking whatever actions next. It's the same idea. Okay. So the higher your initiative, the earlier you get to go. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's deft hands. Steal more things. <laughs> so yeah, oh, I, mean, I do like the take, alertness take for that plus and... two to like finding traps and shit. Well, that's only to listen and spot. That's not to search. Oh fuck! I thought search spot is was what you use same for. Thing. Nope. What was spot for then? Uh, listen and for... no, listen and spot is like uh, say you're going down a hallway. It's to notice, like either see or hear what's happening at the other end of the hallway, even though you might not be able to see that far, or, like, well, in terms of listen, or hear something coming around a corner. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, Dust, thanks for uh, helping out in chat, man. 
he's kind of uh he's he's running like a side class in the, in the <laughs> chat helping me teach people so that's awesome thanks man <laughs> Well, it's like I can't really pay a whole lot of attention to chat while I'm doing this, so it's oh, good, yeah, definitely. good to have people around that can answer questions that I'm ignoring. Hey, I will take that point blank shot. Okay. So point blank shot gives you sure. a plus one attack bonus on uh, anything within 30 feet. Sweet. You're still gonna get the minus four because you don't have a precise shot yet, but eventually, like. Feet but that's you in take. that's into the melee one, though. The precise shot is if you're gonna be firing into melee, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fine. I'll just run in. <laughs> <laughs> and run away. <laughs> All right. So those are your two feats. Um, trip your half orc barbarian, so you get one feat. Uh, okay. I could make some suggestions if you'd like. Uh, weapon focus, uh, weapon focus is always a good, uh, good one. But that's if you're, that's if you want to stick with the weapon that you're using. Like it, weapon focus gives you a plus one bonus on attack rolls with selected weapon. So, I would. It doesn't specifically have to be that exact greatsword, but any kind of greatsword it works for. But it has to be a greatsword. Short sword won't work. Broadsword, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But the plus one bonus on attack is good, and it also opens you up to weapon spec, which gives you plus two bonus on damage rolls with that weapon. Greater weapon focus gives you another one to attack. And you can just stack it up. That's like if you're going to keep with that weapon and you're super attached to it um power attack is always good because that opens you up for cleave um i don't think i've ever made a melee character that didn't have power attack and cleave uh basically the way that works is um you have a one bab right now right where would i look at that Oh, base attack bonus. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to end up saying that a lot. So BAB is base attack bonus. Yeah, I have a one. Okay. So power attack says you can trade attack bonus for damage up to base attack bonus. So right now you could use power attack on something, and there's no limit on the number of times you can use this unless it's specified. Um, say you're attacking a goblin, and you say, okay, I'm going to power attack. Well, you're... You're taking that one to hit from your base attack bonus, so your hit is going to go down one. But then your damage, if you hit, will go up one. I Which see. doesn't sound like a lot now, but when your BAB is like eight, and you're swinging two-handed. Yeah, power, that sounds power, good. Power attack, I think, is going to be your best bet. And then cleave is v super useful, especially if you're dealing with groups of shit. Because, uh, say you say you attack that goblin and you kill it, you basically cleave right through him and attack the next one that's within striking distance with the same attack bonus. It's not an automatic hit; you still have to roll, but you're still you're getting the same bonus. It's like an extra attack, basically. Yeah, power attack sounds good for starting things. Okay, so write that under your feats on uh, the second page. All right, time for Lou. All right. Mm. So I get two, right? Two feats? Uh, yep, you get one feat for first level, and then you get uh, your warrior bonus feat. Um, uh, I'm sorry, fighter bonus feat. Uh, those, if you're looking in the player's handbook, they they have the little one next to them. So like, I'll see if I can list them all out for you. Uh, blind fight. Uh, that's reroll miss chance for concealment. I wouldn't worry about that too much because you have dark vision anyway. Uh, if I you're... can see it. I can see. It. I have it up. Oh, you got it. Oh, okay. Um, the one thing I was wondering, do I automatically have as a fighter um, the 
armor proficiency or no? Yeah, you're already proficient with the armor that you have. I think you're proficient with all armor as a fighter. So that means I don't have any armor check penalties on attack rolls. Not on attack rolls, no. Well, that's what armor proficiency, light, medium, heavy, for the feats. That's what I was asking. Oh, no, that's that would only be like... Um... That would only be like if, uh, say, Scruffles wanted to put on full plate that she's not proficient with, but she wanted to spend a feat and get proficient with it. You're, you're already proficient, so you don't have to worry about that, is what I'm saying. It's built into your class. Okay, right, but I'm, so I'm, the, what I'm asking is, do I get those armor penalties on attack rolls then? The armor nope. check penalties? Nope, because you're already oh. proficient. So I don't worry about that crap then? No. That's like okay. if you want to add more to the armor, that types of armor you can wear, that kind of thing. Okay, so because I'm technically proficient in all armors, like I can wear full plate and don't have to worry about, well, I get a minus 10 off my attack because I want to. Nope, don't even have to worry about it. Mm. All right, cool. So that was my main concern. So blind fight is... Roll, re-roll chance miss for consume. Um, like the the spell darkness that Dro loved to use um, mm -hmm. creates this huge area of effect darkness spell and you can't even see through it with dark vision right mm -hmm. um, so technically everything in there has concealment so even assuming you can find something and you swing at it uh, you have to roll percentile uh, which is the 2 d10s and then basically either choose high or low and if you choose wrong you miss uh, if you have blind fight, it gives you the chance to re-roll that. Okay, well, that starting off, it. like, where my character is starting off, are we, like, starting off underground? I wouldn't worry off? about it. Okay, I, like, because I'm not blind trying fight, to meta game, but at a No, no, that's part. fine. Blind fight was really fucking good in first edition, and they, like, totally changed it to from uh, that to 3.5. Because there was no, like, concealment, um... Yeah, it works with, like, invisible enemies, too, but I wouldn't worry about that anytime soon. And depending on, like, who the who the fourth person is and what kind of character that they, they want to play, you might need, not even need to worry about it. You have spells like Glitter Dust that can get around that. You could waste a cantrip and have, like, an unseen servant throw flour everywhere, you know what I mean? Like, there's creative ways to get around it. I wouldn't dump a feed into it. Like I said, dodge, our house ruling is it just gives you plus one to your AC. That's a good good for a tank. Um, weapon focus. Yep, if you're going to stick with your chosen weapon. What about power attack? Power attack is also good because you're melee. Trade. Trade attack bonus for damage. Yep, that's what Trip just took. So right now your base attack bonus is a uh, plus one. Mm -hmm. So say you want to attack a goblin. You're not mm -hmm. going to get the plus one on the attack. You'll get the plus one on the damage instead. So that's like something you uh, want to gotcha. use. It's like, I know I can hit this fucking thing. And I want to hit it hard. But then like, if you take power attack, that opens you up to get cleave, Great Cleave, Improved Bull Rush, Improved Overrun, which I had to right, deal yeah. with my last gaming session, and that was not fun. <laughs> Fucking Frost Giants with Improved Overrun. Oh, God. There was many a character knocked prone that day. <laughs> Never go prone. Never, ever be prone if you can help it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go with power attack and weapon focus, I would think, right? That would work. I'm trying to see if there's anything I really need to think about as far as shield stuff goes. Um, not really. You're already proficient with tower shield, so that's kind of like a... That's not like really a good list of feats to get into because you're already proficient with shield so you could take improved shield bash uh, which means you keep your AC bonus when you're like 
bashing somebody with your shield, like making an attack with your shield, which I wouldn't bother doing anyway, really. Well, could you double it up on, uh, because you can't do two attacks, like a swing and a shield bash, could you? Uh, you could, but you'd be getting, like, huge minuses for it. Yeah. Is there a way to counter the huge minuses? Would that be, like, dual wield, basically? Yeah, you could, you could probably get that into, like, two-weapon fighting. That would be like a that'd be like a DM's discretion though, if they mm -hmm. wanted to apply two weapon fighting to using a shield. I, I would say simple. Yeah. And do a power attack. And uh, was it weapon finesse? Yeah. No weapon focus. Or focus. Yeah. There we go. Uh, and when you when you write down weapon focus, just make sure you write down which weapon it's with, because it has to be the the selected weapon. Right, yeah. Like Which I said to Trip, it doesn't have to specifically be that weapon. Like, if you find another one that's the same type of weapon, it'll work. Right, yeah. Um, so let me put these in here. I just lost power attack. Mm. We're making good time, by the way. Oh, yeah. We just hit like the three hour mark. Three hour, yeah. I, I was assuming it would take between three and four hours, so. Jay. Who you been so making pro? characters with? <laughs> <laughs> Myself, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it starts really getting into like character creation can take a long time when you're like past the basic spot and you're trying to do like advanced crazy oh, yeah. stuff. Where you're like min max and like a fool, and at that point it's like, well, you're kind of really metagaming. gaming, well, and that can kind of take the fun out of shit sometimes. And like, um, a lot of things we'll do is like, there will be a specific campaign setting or module that whoever's going to DM wants to run, so they'll start everybody off at like level ten or level five, right, yeah. something like that, so you can just get right into it. All right, so. So with the trade attack bonus for damage, okay. This is going to take I'm going to forget to do power attacks sometimes. <laughs> I have a well, feeling and it's was. it's not something that you're going to want to use all the time. In fact, uh, my buddy Dave when he DMs, he says that you can't power attack right off the bat. Like especially if it's if it's something you fought before, then yes, but if it's something that's completely new, like you're not going to go all out on your first attack. You're going to want to make sure you can hit it first, right? Well, right. I mean, depending on how your character is, really, because then it kind of like role well, play. Like, your guy just head rushing everything. If, if Trip's raging, he's going to power attack everything. <laughs> right. All right, so, and then weapon focus bonus on attack rolls. So I get a plus one attack bonus with Dwarven War Axes. Nice. Right. So, uh, as far as like religion goes, do you guys want to pick deities, or do you want to be uh, like... I have. Oh, okay. Page of the deities on? Uh, 106. Oh, I gotta see if mine's on here, because mine's kind of like an offbeat one, because I went with one more aligned to cha uh, chaotic neutral, but I felt would go well with the uh, the dwarf, because I didn't want to go with your standard dwarf. What is it, Morden, right? Yeah. So I went with... Uh, I'm going to probably butcher this. Canagunde, which... Let me see. I have it bookmarked here. It's it's three point five. I just don't know if it's in the book. Right here. If you want to take a peek at it, just to see if. What page did you say deities was on in here? Uh, one hundred six. And like you don't. 
you don't really have to stick to the specific list of deities, and it's not really something like you have to pick right now. Like if you want to spend some time looking through all the de- <laughs> deities in the D and D universe and various mm-hmm. campaign settings and all that kind of stuff. Oh look, there's a god of rogues right there. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. I think it's uh, Alitamara, something like that. Yeah, Alita. Yeah, Alitamara. Yeah, there you go. Cord. Sounds like the barbarian one. Well, let's see. What's Cord got to say about life? God of strength, chaotic good. He's known as the brawler, patron of athletes, especially wrestlers. Dude, you could be the fucking macho man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Big stone. Uh, fucking power oh, attacking, way. raging, like, ooh yeah! Ooh yeah, brother! Snap into a slim trip! <laughs> Isn't there a god section somewhere? God thingy? God poop? Uh, you could probably just Google it. It's like Google 3.5 deities. And I'm sure you'll get a huge list or a bunch of pages. Oh, there it is. No, I was just looking for the place to write it. <laughs> On the character. Sheet. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, yeah, it's near the, the very top. top. I found it. I found it. It's okay. Got it under control. Ne- next to your alignment. Alignment. Yep. <laughs> cool beans. All right, so for the next part, I like to make people roll this. I really won't make you guys do it because I know you probably don't have the die to do it. Um, well, we have that little uh, program that Lou just linked. Oh, that could work. It, it, it's up to you um, if you want to do like random star- starting ages. Sure. Random height and weight. Oh, I just I just put my averages in. Is oh, that's that cool? Fine. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. It's totally up to you guys, your okay. characters. So. Oh, Scruffles, okay. you want to randomize it? Like, uh, take a spin know. on the wheel? I don't know. I don't know. That's scary. <laughs> what if I end up like super old with like arthritis, be like, oh, I'll shoot him. <laughs> nah, no, probably not. Let Let's see. I'll roll it for you. Because I don't think you have a D4. Is it D4 right? Oh, we reached uh, the four hour right. limit. Uh-oh. No, Boo. you have to recall everybody. <laughs> oh no! All right, let's do that and get it out of the way. So, okay. let's see, how do I get out of here? Hold on, let me put that up. Please hold. Technical difficulties. Oh, hello. Hello. All right, looks like everyone's loading back up. Why does it say you need a Skype premium account to make a group video call? Makes no sense. Yeah, it doesn't. Get off of my screen, you putz. Okay, that's loading back up. Yours is loading. Trip's picture is there. <laughs> and I rolled a 1 with a d4 on that little uh, dice roller program. Gotcha. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm assuming bad. So yeah, I don't... is my camera loaded yet? No, it's still circling. All right, I think it's stuck. Let's uh I'll drop the call and recall everybody. Okay. All right. All right. Hola. 
Okay, there we go. Now we Yay! Go. Just waiting for Lou's video. There we go. Beautiful. <gasps> success! And this should still all be lined up. Yay, we're back! Uh, no, it didn't crash. It's just we reached the time limit on Skype. Yeah. Which is doomed. That must be new. It's weird. Trip, are you rolling, rolling dice over there? You having, you having fun? Maybe. <laughs> 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 Alright, let me find my page. Okay, so you rolled a one. Mm -hmm. You're 16 years old. <laughs> well, because it considers... It considers adulthood 15 years for humans. So, I'll, I'll give you the option of bumping that up to 18 if you want, and you can be 19 instead. Or I'll you take 19. 19 okay. sounds a bit better. We're going good old USA, America, legal age of consent. <laughs> <laughs> it's drinking age here. Alright, so humans will be... Let's see, half orc, fourteen years is considered adulthood. Yeah, that's what? about right for trip. <laughs> All right, trip, roll d4. Do you have okay. the? Uh... Um, the link is in the Skype chat. Trip. It's the wizard one. Wizards.com. Which one's the four? Top one. Oh, never mind. I saw the D4. <laughs> Got a two. Yeah, I ain't, play I ain't paying for no premium Skype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what'd you get? A two? Yeah, two. So, you're 16. <laughs> but he's a half orc, so. He's especially like immature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the oldest one in the group. <laughs> How old did you make yourself? Well, dwarves are... Five. Yeah, dwarves are old, old people. Like, adulthood uh, for elf is 110 years old. Wow. One of them long-lived races. I already put down 510 as my house. Oh, nice ammo. <laughs> oh, hi, Lepa. Oh, shit, Lepa's here. Everybody's in the house. All right. Um, so you want to do random height and weight? <laughs> I already put. Well, God, no. <laughs> I put five ten, so I'd probably be about like one forty. I think that's about average. I was gonna go with tallest, buffest orc. Yeah, we'll 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 randomize a trip. It's more fun okay. that way. Okay. Sure. All right. So do you have? To move. Do you have a? Uh, Two twelve sided die. Uh -huh. yeah, you can put that in the thing. Just type two next to the. Yeah, roll the, two d12. The second to the last one. I should randomize mine. You know what? Yeah, we're gonna randomize mine. Fuck it. Okay, we'll do yours next. Uh. Be more interesting. I got a twelve and a nine. Okay, so twenty one. Yeah. All right. So you are six foot eight. Jeez. Not bad. <laughs> and I'll I'll just roll the second part. Or actually, you can roll it. Roll a two d six. A six and a one. Okay. And you are two hundred and fifty seven pounds. <laughs> Fucking brick shit house. <laughs> <laughs> well you so got you your wish. <laughs> you got your wish. <laughs> Six pounds of muscles. Alright, so scruffles, human female, roll two D ten. 
2d10. Oh. 2 d10. Roll. Where does it say? Oh, I'm so confused now. What? Hold on. We said this. 2. Roll. 6 and a 10. So six okay. Ten. So 16. Yeah. Um. So is that for my height or weight? Height? Height. height. I'm sorry, I'm just figuring out the... Alright, so you're... I'm a people, aren't I? <laughs> no, you're... You're five... What was it, 16 you got? Yep. Okay. So you're 5'9". Oh, it's my height in real life. <laughs> and roll 2d4. This is where the fun part comes. <laughs> Uh, two, roll, five, four, and a one. So, am I going to be spilling out of my leather armor? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just a big old muffin top. A <laughs> uh, hundred and sixty-five pounds. Okay. So that's that's about right. You might maybe have some it's like guns. slightly overweight. <laughs> You've got like bone density or something. Who knows? <laughs> Wait, five nine at one sixty five. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. that's like a little bit overweight. It's like that's 50. more like underweight. No. For five for nine, no. For five nine, five, the seven, average is supposed to be like sixty. I mean, you're a dude. Well, I think dudes are generally. It depends Heavy. on your bra size, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, do we need true. to roll for bra size? I don't even want to. I don't even want to get into <laughs> that mess. That's a slippery slope. Depend on if I have back pains or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally, if you had an A cup, you could squeeze through this crevice and sneak around. With my <laughs> but because you rolled triple E's, but kind of fuck dem titties. Dem titties, that's the way. The excellent, you know, distraction devices. If I ever need to, you know, distract somebody. So yeah, I think we've, I think we've pretty much covered the basics. Got everything we need. Um. Now we just need to, uh, and we're, we're. I'm gonna be finishing this up in a minute. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um. But I'll give you like. Uh, I'll go through like a quick rundown of how combat works and how the battle grid works, um, especially for like scruffles, so you know like when you're getting flanking and stuff like that. Um, and we'll be able to look at this more like once we load up uh, roll twenty and all that good stuff. Right. So a lot of a lot of people just RP it and like don't use mapping or miniatures and stuff like that, which works for some people. I prefer to have the grid and the miniatures and have everything so you know yeah, where everybody is. has a thing where you can like draw the map or whatever. Yeah, it's so pretty cool. So you can't cheat. So you yeah. can't cheat. Like, no, dude, I was totally there. I said that like <laughs> right. 50 turns well, and, ago that I was just chilling here. <laughs> it, it makes it a lot easier to like figure out when somebody has flanking and things like that. So you guys already basically understand how attack rolls work. You're going to roll d20, uh, add your attack bonus for whatever weapon it is, and then that has, has to hit or exceed your enemy's armor class. Okay. Attack bonus for the short bow is 0 slash 3. What, what is that exactly? I don't understand that. So I'd roll a d20 and then add 3? Wait, 0 slash... No, it should... For your short bow... Is just going to be your dexterity bonus and your base attack bonus added together. Oh. So if you have a, I think you have a plus three to your dex, right? Oh, that must be why you said like. The yeah. short the short swords is going to be zero slash zero, but that's because you have, the feet two weapon fighting and. <sighs> right. And so I don't get a bonus on either of those. Right, because it would normally be plus two for your strength bonus. I think. But sit. Yeah. 
but you're getting the minus two because of the two because weapon I'm... fighting. So my so, attack bonus for the short bow would be plus three because it's the dex. It's correct. The dex. Mm -hmm. okay, well, dex know. and your base attack bonus, which you don't have yet, but which you'll I get don't that have. next level. Right, okay. Okay. Cool, cool. I understand now. All right, so I'll just go through like the combat basics. They have it on page 135. Uh, I described the battle grid rounds. Combat occurs in rounds. In every round, each combatant gets to do something. A round represents six seconds in the game world. So that's something to keep in mind. Like, you're not going to be able to do a ton of shit each round. It's in six seconds, yeah. It's They break it down into uh, types of actions and how many of each of those you can do in a single round. Like, you can move twice, or you can make a full attack. Um, I saw Dust was talking about it before, like, you can run, all that kind of shit. And they take up uh, varying amounts of time. So, yeah. initiative. Before the first round, each player makes an initiative check for his or her character. DM makes initiative checks for opponents, and... You go from highest to lowest, like I said. So it's just like turn-based. Like if you've ever played Final Fantasy, you get the general idea of initiative. It it's to determine the who goes first in uh, in a combat round. Actions. Every round on your character's turn, you can make you can take a standard action and a move action in either order, two move actions or one full round action. You may also perform one or more free actions along with any other action as your DM allows. Speaking, for example, is a free action. Right. So, like, you can be attacking somebody and be like, get this guy about, get this guy off me, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's not something that's going to take up more time, because you can do it simultaneously. Uh, we covered attack rolls. Uh, damage, that's simple enough armor class you guys understand that um just real quick while we're talking about armor class i want to talk about um you also under armor class you also have touch and flat-footed and oh yeah let me just look that i just want to read it by the book to make sure i don't screw it up Because I know flat-footed, you lose your dexterity bonus. Um, and touch is mostly used by, like, um, like casters use touch spells, touch attacks. Basically, it means, like, your, your armor ain't gonna account for a whole lot. I think touch AC is just 10 plus... Dodge and dexterity. But I want to make sure I do that right. It's probably under armor class. Probably making this way harder than it needs to be. Hmm. Uh, I hope this is the right page. <laughs> so yeah, I've been spending some time looking at uh, Roll20. Uh, I'd say I'll probably be able to do at least something with that. Uh, within the next few weeks. Oh. Duh. I was, like, right on the page. <laughs> okay. So flat-footed means that you're denied your dexterity bonus to your AC. So that's going to be whatever your AC is now, uh, minus your dexterity bonus. 
So, like, say you usually have a plus three to dexterity, that goes away in certain situations. Like, if you're caught by surprise, that kind of thing. Dex. Well, because, like, dexterity is, like, part of that is being able to avoid attacks, which is why it gets counted as part of your armor class. But if it's, like, if you don't know an attack is coming, you're not going to be able to dodge it. Okay. So that's the concept but behind flat-footed. And then touch, uh, so touch attacks. Some attacks disregard armor, including shields and natural armor. For example, a wizard's touch with a shocking grasp spell hurts you regardless of what armor you're wearing or how thick your skin happens to be. Because some, some races have like a natural armor bonus. Mm -hmm. That's advanced stuff we'll get into another time. Uh, in these cases, the attacker makes a touch attack roll. When you are the target of a touch attack, your AC doesn't include any armor bonus, shield bonus, or natural armor bonus. So you get uh, dexterity and deflection if you happen to have one, which I don't think anybody does. Mm. So it's going to be 10 plus whatever your dexterity is, basically. And that's low. It's meant to be low. It's not every day that a wizard's going to get close enough to somebody to to use a touch spell on them. But like a lot of spells use touch attacks, so it's it's basically like uh, like if you again if you get hit with a shock and grasp spell, the metal armor that you're wearing isn't going to prevent any of the damage that you're taking or be able to nullify it entirely. <clears throat> so I got a quick question. With attack sure. bonus, that's for the attack roll, right? Correct. And then damage bonus, does that come through anything or no? That's your strength. So nice. like your 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 chance to hit your attack roll is going to be your base attack bonus plus your strength uh, modifier. For damage, it's going to be whatever the damage of the weapon is plus your strength mm -hmm. modifier. So, so, wait. so, for example, Trip has a 20 strength, so his is plus 5, so his damage is whatever it was, I think, 2d6 plus 5. Plus so 7. If, okay. So if yours is, like, plus 4, that would be your, your damage bonus. So, when I'm rolling to attack, because I'm trying to remember, like, if I'm rolling to attack something, my ability modifier on my strength is 3. I have a base attack bonus of 1. Plus, I have the weapon focus plus one attack bonus on my Dwarven Axe, so I would add five to my attack roll. To your attack roll. The weapon right. focus and doesn't then, apply to damage, though. Right. It's and only so my attack. damage would just be 1d10 plus three for my strength, right? Correct. Okay, got you. And there, there's That's other fun. ways to boost up your your damage rolls, like uh, either through power attack or um, if you get magic weapons, which you will eventually because you'll need them, uh, that'll also add to your damage too. Depending but if on... I do power attack, I subtract one from my actual attack roll and then add that to my damage, right? Correct. Gotcha. Okay, let's clarify. But, like, Trip would take one off, if he's power attacking, he takes one off and then adds two because he's wielding two, he's wielding a weapon two-handed. Gotcha. So, that that's why power attack is awesome for barbarians. Oh, yeah. Should we, like, have any size modifiers, natural armor? Nope. Okay. Uh, the only, the only size modifier that you would see would be for halflings. Uh, I think they get a plus one to their... Uh, armor class for being small, basically. And then, um, like contrapositively, if you were if you were a playing a large player character, which is advanced stuff, we'll get into another time. But then you would get a minus one because of your size, because you're bigger, so you're easier to hit. Yeah, I did a half ogre. I think I was a barbarian, and it was just oh, that's dirty. Oh, dude, it was, I, I couldn't die, and I was just like, the DM was like, this was a bad idea to let you do this. I was like, I asked you first, and you said it was cool. 
he actually like helped me make it OP, like on top of what I already had set up for it. So it's just like, why did you? <laughs> yeah, I actually, uh, I uh, DM a Forgotten Realms campaign, and I let my my players get a little away from me with their with their character creation. <laughs> well, and like part of that was my fault because, like I said, I helped them. And I was yeah. like, you know, it'd be really fucking cool if you <laughs> forgetting that I'm the one that's gonna have to deal with this fucking exactly. Mess. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I ended up benching one of the characters because he was just ripping through everything, like literally everything, because he was half dragon, half furbolg, so just ridiculously yeah. huge strength, and he had a spiked chain and whirlwind attack. So he's just every round, he's just fucking <laughs> wailing on everything within like 30 feet. Yeah. Because I mean, because he was half fur bulk, so he was large, so that increased his range too. I was like, yeah, oh, this God. was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, if you don't want me to play him anymore, I understand. I was like, yeah, that'd, that'd probably be for the best. Stop <laughs> breaking my game. <laughs> it was like everything I tried to throw at him, it was like too it was too much for the other characters and he would just wipe them he was basically like one manning it yeah that's pretty much what happened with me it was like everybody else was close to death and i was like just stand back and everyone would like stand back and i'm just like and he's like bulldozer yeah he's like he ended up like throwing so much at me that it just like eventually wore me down and killed me off yeah dude barbarians are awesome can you like eventually wield two hander? Like dual wield two hander? Um, at significantly high minuses, yes. the The game isn't really quite structured like a video game, where it's like you can uh. either you can either wield things or you can't. Like really, you could wield anything. It's just like how effective are you gonna be with it? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Then it tends to stick more to the realistic because it's like. No matter what, if you come in there, unless you're like using really tiny daggers or something, if you're running around with two two handed axes, yeah, you're, you're not gonna be able to swing like, as hard or as accurately. Well, I meant like how you were saying the guy was like half dragon. That would make sense. There's a there's a feat. I forget what it's in, but it makes it so that you can. You can wield weapons that are a size category larger than you without a penalty, or like without additional penalties. So like that's what he was using, because he was already large. So then he was using a huge spike chain, which like the fucking range is like sixty feet. <laughs> <laughs> just like literally just holding up a chain and going oh, <laughs> and hitting everything in range every round for stupid amounts of damage so where are we at now that we got the character sheets done uh i think we're pretty much done and uh i'll have to see if i can find us another player or somebody okay. who wants to dm and then we'll we'll get a group going okay um i know that there's a way to import like uh character sheets into roll 20 but i haven't looked at that a lot yet like i've kind of just been working on like getting the basics of mapping and stuff down okay okay we got time yeah i mean i figure like within two weeks i should be able to get a good enough handle on everything and find us another player or a dm so so we might not be playing next monday uh we might we might not if we don't i'd still like to get together and we'll talk about some more D &D stuff okay sure or if if I learn enough of roll twenty in that time, I could probably give you guys like a tutorial on that, how it all That's works. Crazy. Okay, cool. So this was uh very successful. We got quite a few viewers, so that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Very happy about that, the turnout. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate it Thanks, a lot. Guys. Uh make sure here, let me uh I think I still have copy pasta for Scruffles and Lou's channels. If you guys aren't already familiar with Lou and Scruffles, they both stream. They're amazing people. You should hit the follow button on their channels and be delighted by their antics as I am.
<laughs> I'll see you in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Trip, what do you what do you got going on? You got a YouTube you want me to pimp for you? Uh, no. Nah. Twitter. Twitter. I guess you can give him my Twitter. <laughs> All right. It's uh at Trippenstein, right? Yeah, I'll. You're in my chat, aren't you? Yeah, you can just you can type in your your info. So, make sure you uh, follow these fine people. It's not the Thog Lore Show. It's Know Your Role. So, <laughs> hopefully, we get to do this quite a bit more often. I had a lot of fun, to be honest. Oh yeah. Like, I'm excited to start. I just want to get in there and start murdering and stealing things, and it's gonna be great. <laughs> well, and and in the meantime, uh, something I wanted to point out is you asked before about uh, what was it? Inspiration. Yeah. I think. I think that's actually in the rules of version 4 or 5. I don't know. I haven't looked at 5 really yet. Um, okay. But that's something that like I would I would do in any version of the game. Just uh, like spend some time and like flesh out your character as far as like it doesn't have to be you don't have to like write me a short story or anything. Just like mm. a general background of who your character is and what their life is like and all that kind of stuff. Okay, okay. The the garnish, if you will. Garnish. The flavor text. <laughs> yes, flavor text. Because then you can always, you can always go back to that and be like, "Well, my character grew up in the mountains, so he should know something about." So I might give you a bonus on certain roles. Right. It's it it's something I like to leave up to my players. Because uh, it's only in your own best interest to do it, so it's totally up to you. You know what I mean? Is there like a set lore or something? Um, there is and there isn't. There's so many different campaign settings and planes of existence that um, that's not super important. Um, I'm sure if you wanted to look it up online, there's got to be tons of Dungeons and Dragons lore that you could look at. The uh the Dragonlance campaign setting is really cool. Um but it's not there there's things that are specific, um, like player character wise to Dragonlance, but that's not to say that I couldn't put your characters in there, you know what I mean? So I'm not really sure yet, because I gotta figure out roll twenty first and then I'll find a good starting campaign. Okay. So I think that about covers it. All right, sweet. So thank you, Lou, Scruffles, and Trip. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time and doing this with me. I think it was a big success. Thank Hopefully you for teaching will... us D and D, man. Yeah, no problem, man. I, yeah. I, I love playing. I love teaching people about it. Because, like I said before, when I was first thinking about doing this, is that I want to. I want to be able to sit down with a group of people and get it on camera and be like, this is, it. it's kind of a lot of work at first to get started, um, just because there's a lot of little boxes you have to fill in and picking ranks and all that kind of shit. have so many boxes. So it's kind of time <laughs> consuming. Boxes. And eventually, if you start playing in real life with like a group like I do, um, like say somebody wants to start a new campaign with new characters, they can just be like, make a level 10 character and then they might ask you you know to fit a certain alignment or we got to have a cleric in the party because of this but i wouldn't worry about that stuff right now yeah so okay that concludes our program hopefully we'll see everybody next week yeah. see you everybody uh